the key takeaways from the data set is, is that this is a very heavily pre-treated population. I mean, 25% of the patients had received basically everything, abrad or an enzalutamide, docetaxel, cabazitaxel. So the response rates that we saw were not huge, but they were reasonable considering that population and the fact that this was molecularly unselected and we did not have any confirmed patients with DNA repair alterations. So what we saw were that in the soft tissue disease patients, we saw 14% with a significant PSA decline greater than or equal to 50% that was confirmed. And we saw that in the overall population it was about 12%. I think the most interesting thing is the soft tissue disease resist 1.1 analysis, where if you look at the waterfall plots, 29% of the patients who had soft tissue disease had significant shrinkage greater than 30% of their target lesions. Uh, the confirmed overall response rate, however, was 7%. But the one thing that uh, I should point out is, is that resist 1.1 is hard to confirm in prostate cancer if you have non-target lesions like bone metastases or bone scans that look worse. And that is what happened in all of the patients that had those responses other than one, is they had progression in non-target lesions and bone lesions. So there are a couple hypotheses there. One is, could that have been healing flare? And that actually those patients were still responding because when you give an IO therapy, you usually see a durable response. It's rare to see a short-term response and then progression in the bone uh, somewhere else. So could that have actually been healing in the bone and have been labeled as not being labeled as a confirmed response purely because of a healing flare in the bone. I think one other possibility is, is the bone microenvironment and soft tissue microenvironments are different and perhaps this might work better for soft tissue, but I think those sorts of hypotheses need yet to be validated.